Hello and welcome to Christ Church Without Walls. Our service this morning blends the traditional and the new, the familiar and the fresh. And it's the fresh that we begin with. A London Gospel Choir Pentecost song written recently for all in Wandsworth Prison. Let's listen. Rise within us, Holy Spirit, rise with healing, healing in your wings, rise within us, Holy Spirit, we're wind and tongues of fire which rested on the heads of the apostles filled with the holy spirit they began to speak in different languages scoffed, saying, they have been drinking too much Filled with all. 
The apostles worked many signs and miracles And all who shared the faith owned everything in common They sold their possessions and shared everything among themselves each day they went to the temple but met at home to break bread and praise God. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. I hope you found that moving. From looking back with the Gospel Choir to the coming of the Holy Spirit, today we celebrate Trinity Sunday, God as three in one, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Inspired by him, the Apostles began to ready themselves for mission, which is where the readings will be taking us in the coming weeks. And as they set out, to make Christ known everywhere, they, and we, are buoyed up by Christ's promise, I am with you always. In our service today, we have two guest speakers, Simon Heron, whose arrival as our new vicar, we're looking forward to very much, and the Bishop of Tewkesbury, Bishop Robert. Simon is giving the children's talk and Bishop Robert the address. Last week we had our virtual Harwood Hall for coffee and chat after the service and we hope very much that it will become a regular feature of our Sunday mornings. So do please call in after this service. In addition to two speakers, we also have the richness of two poems which have the same title, Trinity Sunday. The first is by George Herbert, a well-known Church of England priest in the early 17th century and a contemporary of John Donne. Later, we'll hear Malcolm Geitz's version, and you may remember he's a contemporary poet-priest who, and we enjoyed um, two of his poems around Easter time. As we come to our time of confession, here then is George Herbert's poem. So let us pray with one heart and mind. Lord, who has formed me out of mud and hast redeemed me through thy blood and sanctified me to do good, purge all my sins done heretofore, for I confess my heavy score and I will strive to sin no more. Enrich my heart, mouth, hands in me, with faith, with hope, with charity, that I may run, rise, rest with thee. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, I'm Simon, and very soon I'm going to be the new vicar of Christchurch. And I can't tell you how excited I am that I'm going to meet all of you. I have a question for you. I wonder if you can think of any of the things that Jesus taught his friends and us to do. I have a few ideas and I've got some pictures that'll be just up here that might help us think about them. There was one time when Jesus was with his friends and they asked him how they should pray. Jesus taught them some words that we now know as the Lord's Prayer. That's one of them. There was another time when Jesus was with his friends again and they were sharing a Passover meal together. They had bread and they had wine. Jesus broke the bread and gave them all the wine. And then he said to them, every time you share this meal, remember me. And that's what we do when we have communion at church. I don't think there was a time that Jesus ever taught his friends to surf. But if he had, that would have been really cool. We heard another time in our reading a bit earlier. We heard this. Go and make disciples, says Jesus, of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. That first bit that Jesus said, make disciples. Well, what is a disciple? Well, firstly, a disciple is someone who follows Jesus. One of the important things about following Jesus is that it's not static, it's not stationary, it's not still. It moves. We don't just decide that Jesus is a good thing and decide to follow him and then stop. Following means keeping on moving and following, journeying with Jesus. So being a disciple means following Jesus. It also means learning about him as well. Christians believe that Jesus died for us. He rose from the dead. And that God forgives us for all the things we've done wrong when we ask him. We also believe that he's prepared a place for us in heaven. And we can find out all about that in our Bibles. There is so much to find out about Jesus. No one knows everything there is to know about him. So all of us disciples are learners as well. So disciples are followers and learners. They are also worshippers of God. And worshipping is something we often do when we meet together. Even when we're meeting together like this. We sing some songs, we pray, we worship. So disciples are followers and learners and worshippers. And fourthly, disciples are witnesses. A witness is someone who has seen something or knows something and can tell someone else all about it. Jesus wanted us to be witnesses, to be people who told others about him. 
we find out more about him for ourselves and tell our friends and family the same things about how good God is, about how much he loves us, about him wanting us to love him and trust him and put our lives into his hands as well. I think all of those things about being a disciple are really exciting. Being a follower, being a learner, being a worshipper, being a witness. Jesus wants us to make new disciples for him and that's how his church grows. One person tells someone else, they tell someone else and so on and so on. I wonder if this week you could think of a way you could tell someone else about Jesus and help to make some new disciples for him. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love, that we may truly worship you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice, strive for full restoration, encourage one another, be of one mind, live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All God's people here send their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The very first church of which I was vicar back in about 1993 was uh, All Saints Bellas Park. All Saints Bellas Park is in Thurrock. If you've ever driven round the M25, it's that bit just north of the Dartford Bridge. It was a large county council overspill housing estate. Initially, it had been built with lots of prefabs. People resettled out of the East End after the war uh, and gradually it had been developed further. The church itself had been built in the 1950s. Um, I loved it, but let's just say it didn't have the architectural elegance to get it anywhere near uh, the thousand best churches in the United Kingdom was quite functional really with lots of very plain glass in it and then one year one of the former incumbents who I think must have come into some money gave us a donation to put in a stained glass window we had lots of discussion about what the window should be some fancied something a bit more Victorian Jesus and the lambs others wanted something more modern something which spoke about our estate and I'm really pleased to say that the more modern version was the one that we went for. We did battle with the DAC and eventually it was put into place. It was a great design. You can see it here. It had lots of local features in it. It had some of our houses and our flats. It had some green space in it for our parks. It had the shape of the factory roofs. I think it even also had the top of Lakeside Shopping Centre, but that was a, a question of debate amongst some. Zach Stamp, one of our young servers, said, it tells us something about God. And he said that as he looked at the three figures that you can see in the window, three figures of a family, of the Trinity of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit arms extended to each other, not static, but in motion. Three figures in a relationship, a relationship of love and of peace. And if you look at the picture, the hands, I think, are extraordinarily significant. They are hands that are both protecting and also open. I'm not sure that the artist we commissioned had Paul's words to the Corinthians much in mind when he designed the window, but he could well have done. 
Paul in these three short verses instructs the church on the way in which we should live, live in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the love of God and in the communion of the Holy Spirit. We are to live in relationship, to feel to live in love and peace. That reflects the nature of God, of God whose essence is relationship, deep relationship. The Trinity is immensely difficult to describe. One of the most used illustrations is that of water, water which can be either liquid or it can be steam or it can be ice. But, and apologies if you've used this illustration, it won't do because water and ice and steam cannot be there at the same time. And the thing about the Trinity is that it's a place of belonging where all are present, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, at the same time together. Place of belonging, encounter, capture, all brought into one. And Trinity is at the heart of who we are to be as the church, at the heart of our life together, to be a place of community, of hospitality, not just for our own selves, but a place of welcome and service that embraces the other. This time when our buildings are not open for corporate worship, we know that the church is not closed. And that comes as a result of the action of the Trinity, of our God who binds us together in relationship and sends us out in service. It comes out of us being caught up into that relationship of God, live together, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then what does this service look like? In the gospel, Jesus gives us three things that we are called to do. First, we are to baptize. We are to make new disciples. We live in relationship with God and we live in relationship with others. And those open hands call and invite others in. Others in so that they may find with us that here is life to be lived to the full, life to be shared. It's from this life that our service flows, which is why, secondly, then we teach the faith. We make new disciples helping them and us to grow in our understanding of the faith, our knowledge of the Bible, of the church, of how to pray, so that we may be deeply rooted in that which we believe, so that it may grow strongly in us, and that we may play our part in that service to the world with others. And then thirdly, we are to be confident that God is with us, not uh, arrogant, but confident in our life and in sharing our faith. For God is faithful at this time especially. It's important for us to remember that God is faithful and our trust, our hope is to be placed in God to whom we commit ourselves. The God who comes to bring in the kingdom of justice and of mercy and of peace. The Trinity might seem like something very confusing. It may seem like an obscure piece of doctrine, but it's much, much more than this. However hard it might seem sometimes to get our head around it. At the heart of the Trinity is God's love shared in relationship and a love that calls us in and sends us out in service what God does and it's what we are invited to share. Amen. In the beginning, not in time or space, but in the quick before both space and time, in life, in love, in co-inherent grace, in three in one and one in three, in rhyme, in music, in the whole creation story, in his own image, his imagination, the triune poet makes us for his glory and makes us each the other's inspiration.
He calls us out of darkness, chaos, chance, to improvise a music of our own, to sing the chord that calls us to the dance, three notes resounding from a single tone, to sing the end in whom we all begin, our God beyond, beside us, and within. On this Trinity Sunday, we pray to you, Father, Son, and Spirit. You are God the Creator, giving us richly all things to enjoy. You are Christ, the Saviour of the world, made flesh to suffer with us. You are the Spirit of truth and love, the flame of hope dwelling within us. You are one God, the eternal Trinity. Be near to us, the people formed in your image, and close to the world which your love has brought to life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all nations and peoples of the world, thinking especially of those suffering from injustice and prejudice. We pray for our brothers and sisters, mistreated due to the colour of their skin. When the scale of this injustice seeks to overwhelm us, we ask that your spirit will be the encouragement we need to speak out against it. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our government to make the right decisions to bring us through this coronavirus crisis. We pray for NHS workers who are working so hard to save lives and for scientists who are trying to find a vaccine. Lord, in your mercy. 
hear Hear our our prayer. We thank you that some children were able to go back to school this week. We pray that they will be safe and that they will make the most of this opportunity. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. We pray for all the children who are still at home, longing to see their friends again. Help them to have patience and to do their best to learn at home. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. We thank you that some people have been able to meet up with their family again. We pray for all those who are still isolated and lonely. May your peace be with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. We finish by saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Our Father Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. A liturgy for those consumed by media. Amidst the glowing screens and talking heads and blaring headlines and laymen turned experts. Our hearts grow weary and fingers turn sore as we refresh our feeds, scrolling to numb the swelling tide rising within, threatening to topple and overwhelm. Liberate us, O God, from our gluttonous tendencies to hoard knowledge and feast upon information as if it is our daily bread. Remind us, O Father, that our screens are but clouded mirrors. Sift the important news meant to equip us towards movement and compassion from the distorted facts and fear-mongering headlines, designed only to divide and destroy the hope we have in you. Keep us from banging our gongs and clanging our cymbals. If we post with the tongues of men and angels but have not love, help us to log out. O loving God, you see the gravity with which the world's suffering pulls us inward. Extend us grace to grieve for the broken world you adore. Then wash our faces and turn, clear-eyed, to our windows through which we can see the trees still clapping, the sparrows still flying, the stones still crying out praise to you. Grant us wisdom to discern what you deem true and right and noble and pure and praiseworthy and lovely and give us grace to share accordingly. Amen.
God the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and in peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you and all whom you love and care for, this day and for evermore. Amen.